replace the exit hole for this thread graph. We want to think about using the golden section. Some of you might be thinking, why go to all this trouble? Some people like to use paper towels and wrap that around their wire. I think we can do a little bit better. Hey folks, welcome back to Acer P Bonsai. This week we're here with this Acer Palmatum Sagan. Uh, Sagan is a wonderful classic Japanese maple prized for bonsai use. Uh, it's another one of the varieties that goes from a red to a green to a red, but it also displays some really spectacular variegation uh, throughout the seasons. So it adds just one additional element of mystique. Uh, I wanted to get a larger sized Sagan to work on, and this is the biggest one that was available. Now, although there are some flaws here with the graft line, we really should talk about the structure of this tree because not only is it really hard to find Sagan in the US, this one is still fairly nice in size and just look at all this movement. Uh, the secondary trunk here has a really lovely curve low and then it goes up here and splits. And then this side over here splits into two main sub trunks off of this second trunk. And it splits here and then this one splits again here. And you can see again, like in the last video, there's a few of these large chops. There's one chop here. There's a big chop you can see here. Here's another chop here, a chop here. And then on this back one, you can see the, uh, this chop here. On this trunk line, you can see a chop here, and then a chop here, and a chop up here. So definitely several years of work getting this. And man, that movement is just spectacular. If you look over here, like some of these natural curving lines, this is not something that was done with wire. The tree was allowed to grow so densely and particularly this large cut, if you see this extended way up and was allowed to grow for a few seasons, that large growth up top likely shaded the tree out and it naturally caused this curvature as this branch here was searching for light. So cool. And then this other one here, ended up growing st almost straight down. This tree has a lot of really great character and I'm excited to develop it with you. Uh, so please, if you'd follow along with me, let's get into the work. For starters, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning the tree up. We're gonna remove any dead branches and any unusable crowded areas. We may thin those out a little bit. There we go. This is just a one tiny branch here. I wanna save it. It's got an old Petiole. Let's get that off of there. This is just such a lovely tree. I'm really excited to work on it. So you may see a couple areas with cut putty. There's one there, there's one down here, there's another one here. Those were some of the branches that got broken in shipping. So I did clean those up as soon as I received the tree. I'm going to move you guys in closer because I want you to take a look at this really interesting branching here. Let's talk about how we're going to deal with this because we've got these two main trunks coming up and then there's these two smaller side branches, both coming out from this side. My first instinct is that these have really interesting natural movement and I don't wanna lose them. So we've got this branch here, we've got this branch here, and as you can see, they're both coming right from the same node line here. And this is a really straightforward example of a structural flaw because we have the one trunk coming up here and then that branches into these two sub trunks. These branches here are so small, they really aren't anywhere near large enough to cause any issues with taper. I think I'd like to keep these branches for now. To make sure that these don't cause any structural issues, it's gonna be critical that we treat these like branches in refinement. We're only gonna allow them to extend a little bit each growing period so that they don't overly thicken and cause those taper problems that we talked about. This is a definite prune back. You can see I had that real long extension there. We're going to see some inverse taper in the future if we don't deal with this. We have one, two, three, four, five branches coming out from one. That's definitely violating the one to two rule. Although this doesn't have much of a taper from there to there, this long branch here has a really nice arcing curve to it, and so I do want to keep that as the main movement of this branch. Hmm. This is a really tough decision. This fork here is quite strong. You can see it's got that really wide Y. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this back a little bit. I, I do wanna keep this branch, but I wanna keep it more delicate. And you can see this curves over nice and gracefully, and then it's got the teat buds here that are gonna form really nicely in the springtime. This one looks really weak. I'm gonna prune that. I'm gonna get rid of this bud on the bottom side there just by rubbing that. And then I'm gonna reduce this upward growing branch. That means if we're keeping this, 
we're going to need to get rid of this. And this has a really long intro node here. Trim this back a little more. There we go. Let's get all of that out of there. Because this branch wine was about three times as thick as this little one that we left, I want to make sure it has a little bit of time to die back before we clean that up completely. We can do that later this summer. This interior branch is a little bit weak and it's definitely crowding the trunk, so I'm going to remove that. This has a nice curve to it here. You can see how strong this is. The buds are already pushing, but if you look back further, we've got some nice small buds. So I'm going to cut this tip off and slow this down. We've already got this nice side branch, so we're going to reduce all of this down. I think I'd be better off with my fingernail clippers. You can see the old chop right there, and that's nearly healed. It's maybe two or three millimeters across, but that's going to finish healing this year. We'll cover that up with some cut putty. Got this really interesting little branch here, growing almost straight up. It's really an unsightly branch. It doesn't really match the design of the tree. It's growing down. It got chopped back here. And then this side branch grew really strongly. Now, although this is almost a 90 degree angle, this could really make an interesting moving branch in the future. And I think this curve will smooth out over time. This run of trunk is probably about two inches long. So we're gonna go ahead and apply a thread graft here. There's a nice little branch coming from this trunk here. So we're gonna see if we can bring this around. Oh yeah, this is a nice flexible branch, but we're gonna have it come and fill this space right over here. There's a gap between this branch and this branch over here. I'd like to fill this space. Let's get in close and drill through this trunk so we can apply this thread graft. So when we select our drill bit to do the thread graft, we've gotta look at how big these buds are. And I can put this drill right behind there. You can see that using this drill bit, there's gonna be just enough of a hole to get these buds through without cutting them. All right, this gold bit is slightly smaller. Let's take a look here. Oh yeah, that's gonna be perfect. The buds are gonna be able to slide through the hole, but there's no additional space, so we're not unnecessarily making too large of a hole. After looking closer at this branch configuration, I really love the angles here, but I'm also thinking about the space that this new branch is gonna to have to get sunlight. I think we need to reduce this. We're gonna actually allow this trunk line to follow along here and then cut this way. And these are gonna be the new extensions. We're gonna remove this bottom piece. Don't worry about all this. This is gonna get pruned or used as thread grafts, but this is gonna be nice and open here. There'll be a place in the sun. This branch over here, these branches this way, and we're gonna add that branch over here. When we place the exit hole for this thread graft, we wanna think about using the golden section. So we've got a node here, we've got a node here, and we wanna place it a little bit further up than halfway. So the ratio would be about 1.6 to one. So about right there, I think will be a nice exit. We're gonna start with the bit perpendicular to the trunk. To get our starting hole, and having a strange angle is not going to really do that bad because this is a really contorted tree, but I'm going to raise it up now that we've got our starting hole. All right, and we are through. And on the back side, it is a little bit blown out, but that's to be expected. All right. and easy. And we were able to get that to go through. That's nice. I'm going to keep feeding it through. I'm going to see if I can get past another set of buds here. Make sure we feed it through straight so we're not damaging those tiny buds. There we go. And we're not going to be able to go three this set of buds right here is not long enough to make it. So we're gonna back this off to the appropriate bud placement. We're gonna do just like that. That's gonna be a nice spot for this. So we're gonna put a little wedge in there to hold it in place. I'm gonna use a little piece of this maple branch. 
that's gonna work great. Seal that with some cut putty. We don't wanna be too aggressive with it, but we definitely wanna make sure that there is an air seal over the hole. Precision on the back side is not as important as long as we're creating a nice airtight seal. Pick off the buds behind the graft. We don't want the tree putting any excess energy into these buds. We want them all to go to the tip of that branch. We don't need to worry about wiring this branch in place right now. The wedge did a really good job of holding it nice and steady. This thing doesn't move at all. So all we're gonna do is try to be careful around it and through the spring as it extends, this will swell and it'll adhere to this branch and form a new union. We're gonna do the same thing over on this side. Again, we've got a nice long node here and we need to add another branch. Bring the angle up slightly. All right, there we go. I definitely need to buy a nice grafting knife. I usually resort to these razor blades because they're nice and sharp and I know they're sterile. There we go. When we're doing these thread grafts, we're always going to enter with our drill on the side that the branch is going to exit because you're always gonna have a much cleaner wound where the drill enters versus where the drill exits. And this side is looking really nice too. I'm gonna to rotate this around so you can see. There's our exit hole there, nice and clean. All right, let's get our whip. We've got another really nice branch right here. It's really important that we stay patient. Slow and steady wins the race. This one here we're gonna feed through. It's a little bit snug, but I think this one is gonna fit just fine. Okay. All right, this first set of buds made it through just fine. Let's see if we can get another. That is sliding just perfectly through. We're gonna keep going. Let's see what happens here. Oh boy, there's not enough length. I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna back this out. If I have to, I'll come back and use this one. Being really careful not to damage it. I really think this one will be right in that sweet spot at the right size. Those buds made it. Come on. There we go, right on through. Let's see if we can get one more set of buds through there. Come on, little fella. Oh, that is perfect. I think we've got a perfect angle. The branch is right between these two branches. Really nice exit point there. Okay, let's get this wedged. Get that wedge in there. So it's nice and tight. Okay, we've got a nice long extension. We've got actually one, two, three, four nodes of usable buds. We're gonna scrape off these buds here. We don't want them competing for energy. We've got our wedge in there nice and strong. The branch is solidly in place. Putting those little wedges in there does two things. One, it immobilizes the branch, which is really important for the healing process. And then two, it pushes it against the side of the trunk because you gotta have pressure between the two pieces of wood if you want them to fuse. That walked in. All right, there's thread graph number two. I'm gonna turn this around so you can see the branch is coming out nicely. Got this branch here, this branch here, and our new threaded branch is coming out right in between them. So that's perfect right there. All right, let's turn around. So one branch there, 
one branch there out standing. Over here we have a similar situation. This is a really long internode. It's probably about two and a half inches. Additionally, you'll see, especially from this angle and the foreshortening of the camera, you'll see that there's some inverse taper going on here. The trunk comes up here and then it starts to widen out actually here. The reason for that is because of this last trunk chop. There used to be a really heavy branch growing from here, and that's caused a lot of swelling as it started to roll and heal here. I think we can correct for that inverse taper over time by reducing this area here. That should make it look more natural. You can also see all the swelling that's happened here because there's been so many branches allowed to grow in this area. There's like one, two, three, four. A lot of these have been cut back, but it was definitely an area of congestion that wasn't handled in a timely manner. In the long run of this tree, I do think we're gonna be able to correct this inverse taper. It's just gonna take some time. For now, as we start to build the basic structure of this tree, the most important thing we need to do is add some additional branching. I've been doing you know, a lot of other forms of art, like drawing and painting and tattooing for quite a while. So this may come naturally, but if you're a little confused about the golden section, feel free to look it up. Just Google it and you'll kind of get an idea of how that works. And you'll see a lot of great examples of how the golden section appears in nature. It's okay to just kind of like stab your drill bit slightly into the tree to see that motion. I'm kind of finding a little indent and that's going to help me get this hole started without my drill skipping. Last thing you want is have your drill skip. Uh, it kind of moved a little there <laughs> as I'm talking about it. Last thing you want is for your drill to skip and tear up the bark. Now that I've found a little notch, I'm going to change my angle slightly. I am taking great care. You know, I found the position and the exit angle that I want. I'm also making sure that my drill bit is exactly centered on the trunk here. Applying gentle pressure to my drill and then I'm allowing it to back off a little bit so that the threads of wood come out. Back it off like that, the wood comes out. And you can see we made it through. I didn't uh, do a good job of showing it on the first thread graft, but I just wanted to give a verbal reminder. It's really important that we're cleaning the entry and exit wounds. Again, we select the entry wound where the branch is gonna come out because the drill will create a cleaner cut. The backside or our exit hole is always gonna be a little less precise than the front side. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to remove any of that bark tissue and have a clean cut along the cambium. That's gonna ensure that we have a really nice smooth heel. I had a comment in my previous video that I didn't clean up my edges of the major cuts I did on that clump style red sentinel. So thanks for that feedback in the comment section. I go back to that tree and make sure I clean up all the edges of those wounds on those larger chops I made to make sure that we're setting the tree up for a nice healing process and through the spring. One thing I haven't done yet, but I think I might experiment with, is the idea of doing thread grafts in mid-summer. Now this is going to be a little bit more problematic because of course you have the leaves all over the branches. I'm thinking that if you strip the leaves carefully off of a branch, you could then do a thread graft and then you'd get your second flush of growth. If I have a good candidate for that, I'll maybe make a video of that later on in the summer. All right, that exit hole is looking great. Can you guys see that? So, you know, it may not be quite as handy, but I do like to use these new razor blades. Coming right out of the package, they're about as close to sterile as you can get. And that's going to go a long way in ensuring that we don't cause any kind of infection on the tree. We really want to make sure it's nice and clean. And then after we're done, we add that cut putty to exclude any bacteria or fungus that could get in there and cause a problem. I've got this extra drill bit here. Just push that through and make sure we got all the extra wood out of there. Oh yeah, perfect. That's about as good as we can expect for an exit hole. You may have noticed that in the initial printing process, I left a bunch of extra branches that probably should be cut off. I did that because I wanted to make sure that I had a copious amount of choices for all of these thread grafts I'm doing. Oh great, those buds made it through just fine. We're gonna try to push this through further. Optimally, when we're doing these thread grafts, as many of these nodes that we can get successfully through this, the better. And that's gonna allow us to have more growth on the exit side of the thread graft. The buds are right back here. These are not gonna make it through. The branch just isn't long enough. We always want to make sure that we're thinking about the first node outside of the graft because this is going to be the closest position where we can get additional branching. And then you can see I'm twisting this slightly with my hand here. If possible, we're going to want to create a lateral bud orientation so that we can have branching going this way versus up and down. That's going to set us up for success in the future. We can't always wire this later. The most important part, of course, is that the branch survives, grows vigorously through the spring, and adheres to the trunk. 
Okay, so we've got this about set. I'm gonna wedge it and get this stabilized. Let me rotate the tree so you all have a better view of the exit angle. There we go here, here's our thread graft. I'm cutting a little piece of wood that I pruned off the tree and that will work great to make a wedge. A lot of people use chopsticks. If you're already pruning and you have some maple wood, why not use it? The energy of the tree is coming up from the roots and moving up through the trunk. So I would say the strongest area of healing is gonna be on the bottom edge of this cut. So whenever possible, I like to wedge my thread grafts so that the branch is touching on the bottom. My favorite tool, this razor blade, put on its side with the sharp end away from the graft, I can just gently push that wedge up flush to the tree. Oh yeah, there we go. You see, the branch is nice and well secured. It's fairly lateral in orientation for these buds. Our wedge is applied nicely, and now all we have left to do is to apply some cut putty. So we're making a little donut with our cut putty, and then gently pressing that in. I've seen some videos online where they tell you that you have to scrape donor wood down to the cambium so that the stem cells can be touching each other between the trunk and the branch. That's not the worst approach, but I don't think it's necessary. If you've ever seen fused branches in the wild, you know that they didn't get scraped. They just pressed together and eventually they fused. I'm not worried at all that these will have a problem fusing even without scraping them. In fact, I've noticed on other trees that often even a small bit of damage to the bark of a young branch can cause some really strange and dwarfed growth. And so that can be counterproductive to our goal of getting nice, strong, vigorous growth out of this whip. Remember, we're not pushing hard on the cut paste. We don't want to get that all the way down, driven into the hole where it could block the connection between the branch and the trunk. We want that to remain open so that they can touch and they can fuse. We've got three thread grafts set up. You'll notice that we did not trim back these thread grafts any further than we had to. There's a few little branches like this one here that have two or three nodes on them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in with some wire and see if I can move these branches into place. Like this one comes straight up, but I want to fill in the space at the rear of the tree. So I'm going to have to wire that down. I guess now's a good time to have a quick chat about my preference for the silicone wrapped aluminum wire. All right, so on the topic of aluminum wrapped wire, this is what we're talking about here. Here's a little one and a half millimeter aluminum wire wrapped in silicone. What I do is I buy the appropriate sizes of aluminum that I want and the criteria I use to pick the wire is, you know, which wire is strong enough to bend the branch. So if you can see here, I can press down on this branch and it bends without the wire bending. And then when it comes to the silicone, you can find these on Amazon and they're going to list an exterior and an internal diameter. So what I'll either do is I'll match the same internal diameter to the exterior diameter of the wire, or I'll go maybe half a millimeter or a millimeter larger, depending on what's available. So what I have here is a 1.5 millimeter aluminum wire and it's wrapped in silicone tubing with an internal diameter of two millimeters and an external diameter of three millimeters. I've got a larger one here and let me show you how I do it. It's a little bit tedious, but it's really worth it. So, Here's something a little larger. This is a two and a half millimeter aluminum wire. And then I've got a three millimeter to five millimeter tubing. As you can see, you just put it in the end and then you work it in. Usually it helps to hold onto this and you can kind of guide it, jiggle it a little bit and it'll go over the wire. So some of you might be thinking, why go to all this trouble with the wiring? It's gonna take a long time to wrap all this aluminum and silicone and it's probably not gonna do that much good. Well, the story really goes back to one of my first trees. Back in 2021, I got this little blood good. It actually had a really kind of a crappy graft. Late fall of 2021, I set it up for winter. I chopped back a lot of the branches and then I wanted to do my initial wiring, just like I learned on the forums. You're supposed to do your wiring, you know, right within a week or two of leaf drop and that's the perfect time to get them set. The energy's redistributing. So anyway, flash forward to spring of 2022, all of my branches on my blood good had extreme wire bite. They were completely destroyed. Um, that's the other thing you can learn on the forums is that once you scar a Japanese maple, it's scarred for life or very nearly for life. And I got to thinking, I said, wow, you know, that really sucks because I wanted to put some interesting movement and get those branches um, spread out so they could all get sunlight. I was following all the advice that I had seen online, but I was basically an absolute failure when it came to the wiring. And I was like, wow, I really need to be more delicate with these branches. So later on, I learned that some people like to use paper towels and wrap that around their wire. They, for me, I'm more of the opinion of if you need to use copper wire in the first place, that branch is probably already too far gone to be moved. Uh, in that case, if I was trying to move a big branch, I'd probably 
try to use a guy wire instead. And so then on the case of aluminum, it's commonly thought that if you're using aluminum wire, there's no need to pad it because it's so soft already. I think we can do a little bit better. So the next step might be using paper wrapped aluminum. But I saw the process and believe me, I've been using Viva paper towels for years in my tattoo practice. They're super soft and they, I can understand that. But even if they do, let's say, provide close to the same amount of padding as the silicone, who wants to deal with a bunch of wet, shredded paper towels all over their bonsai tree? That just seems completely counterintuitive. And I thought, wow, let's see if we can find a solution that's gonna provide the padding we want, but also keep a nice clean appearance. And so this is the conclusion that I came to. Silicone wrapped aluminum. It's a little bit of a hassle, but it's gonna be worth it in the long run. And if you take a look here, you can see that I got a bunch of wires. Some of these are prepped, some of these are reused. Aluminum's great because unlike copper, you can unwind it and continue to reuse it. Some of these wires I've used several times. So once you put in the time to make a bunch of these, these are gonna be really useful for wiring out your bonsai and making sure that you're not damaging your branches. After that first experience in 2021, I kind of vowed to myself, hey, I'm gonna do everything I can to protect the structure of my trees. I don't wanna have wire bite. And a little bit of work and a few dollars on Amazon was well worth it to me to make sure I'm protecting my trees to the best of my ability. So for this tree, I really wanna accentuate that contortion that we're seeing in a lot of the primary structure. We've got these little branches here and they're kind of going in really sharp angles and I don't think that's gonna fill in the space as well. I'd like to create some analogous movement. See this nice curving downward branch? I want these to kind of have that same effect. I'm gonna use this two millimeter wire here, see if I can get that effect. This thin one is gonna be easy to bend, but this thicker branch here is gonna take a little more effort. So we really wanna focus on this larger branch first. That's gonna be the hardest to bend. We're not gonna be as worried about this smaller branch. It'll be really easy to move into position. I'm wrapping this wire right over the top of that first segment to make sure that we're in a good position to make this initial bend. In addition to using this wrapped aluminum that's gonna be more gentle on the branch, it's imperative that we really keep a close eye on these branches during the spring. They're gonna start growing really quickly, and as soon as we see any risk of wire damage, we're gonna remove it. So this does take a little bit of a higher touch, but we can get some of those bends. So I bent the, the branch this way toward the exterior of the silhouette, and then I'm also adding just a slight curve downward. Again, like I said, we're gonna accentuate that downward movement. I'm gonna come over the top of that branch this way. There is a very fine node right here. I'm not seeing any strong buds, but those could develop later on. While I'm applying this wire, I'm also doing what they call the slinky technique or the spring technique. What I'm doing is I'm wrapping this wire and I'm not using the branch itself as a fulcrum. I don't wanna add any undue stress to the branch while I'm applying this wire, especially thin branches like this with a heavier relative wire that could definitely snap the branch. So I'm making sure that this wire is delicately wrapped around the branch to avoid any undue damage. You see how I'm bracing this wire and then I'm pushing from the back side. I wanna make sure that I'm using the wire as a brace against the branch as I'm bending it in that direction. That's gonna reduce the chances of breakage. All right, and that's it. The wire doesn't even extend all the way out. That's enough for me. I just wanted to get this initial movement. If I end up using this branch in the future, I may even prune it back to this first node here. But this sets this up in its own space and gives it an opportunity to grow over the spring. Here's another interesting branch. It comes out this way and then it bends really far over here. Now that I'm looking at this, I think this branch here needs to be removed. It's a little bit too large and heavy. It's on the underside of this curve and I think it could cause some inverse taper in the future. I'm gonna do one pass over that with my razor blade. Turn it here so you can see what I'm doing here. See, I'm kind of going back and forth. Really getting up in there. Make sure we have a just razor sharp, clean cut. Not that this branch is out of the way. I'm actually not quite as bothered by this. We still have this branch here that's gonna start competing with. So maybe I will bring this out a little bit further. You notice we've got kind of that slingshot shape here between these two branches. So bringing this branch over into position here is gonna make it look a lot more natural and more mature. I usually don't go much smaller than the 1.5 millimeter. I found over time that that seems to be a really good diameter for even the most small and delicate Japanese maple branches. So we're gonna anchor our wire over this trunk line here. We're gonna make sure it's nice and well secured over that first node. Here we go again, wrapping our wire delicately around the branch. And we're just gonna use this to nudge this branch over into the area we want it. 
This is a little bit problematic here as well. This branch goes to the interior. I definitely think we need to get that moved out. If we end up damaging the branch, we may cut it off. We do have this little guy here. For now, I'm gonna preserve this. If we, if we run into issues with this branch, we could use this branch in the future. I'm gonna move this into position a little bit better when I wire this branch. Definitely gonna need to go for this two millimeter wire to get the movement I want in this branch. So let's come over the top there. Anchor our wire in place. We'll come right over that branch. There we go. We are going to come around the back here. This is a proportionally huge wire. But there should be just enough here to nudge this little branch over there into the over there to the right a little bit. See that? So we just kind of nudged it over. Nothing underneath. We just used the wire to push it that way. All right, so let's see if we can get that bend that we're looking for. If this branch breaks, no harm, no foul. When we're doing these bends on more brittle, larger branches, this is already a year or two old, really important that we add a slight twist to our bend in the same direction as the bend. And that's gonna give us a little bit more grace in our bending here. I've also found that with these Japanese maples, it can be helpful to be really slow and deliberate about your bends. And you can even like kind of bend them multiple times. I've heard some bonsai masters say you need to bend it once, bend it strong, and, and that's the end of it. But I found with these maples, sometimes it can be helpful to just be really gradual and delicate with it. I think we've done a pretty good job of getting this branch out there. It was pointed in the center of the tree. We've got about a 40 degree angle change, so I'm really happy with that. Again, we're doing this contorted design, so we may even end up losing that branch and following this down into some sort of a twisting motion. It could be a really interesting branch in the future. We don't have to make all of the movement in the branch bend on one try. So that means we can let this grow for a while, try to get the movement locked in over the spring, we can unwire it, and we can come back to this branch in the fall and add some additional wire and nudge it a little bit further along. These branches here in the front, I don't want to add any wire to them. They have some really nice natural movement on their own. Having restraint in our wiring is going to be really helpful in maintaining a natural appearance. This branch over here gives me some concern. It's really straight. This inner node is about three inches long. That's really never gonna work for the design of this tree. However, I wanna make sure that this bud is growing strongly before I cut this back. And it's not really interfering too much. I'm gonna wire this to get this out of the way so it's not blocking the light from this lower branch. But I'm not really concerned about keeping this branch. This is really just here to help drive the growth of this bud. I'm gonna allow this to grow and then I'm probably gonna cut it back later on to encourage this to explode with growth. We definitely need to be really careful that we don't mess with our thread graft down here. I'm going to come under this branch. I need to make absolutely sure that I don't interfere with this little bud. This is going to be our future branch. All right, there we go. So we are going to just go in a downward direction. With this bud coming out of the top, and we know that that's our future branch, Bending this entire branch down is going to put this in a more favorable position. Rather than it growing straight up, it's going to somewhat be growing out. This is a sacrificial branch, so we're not really looking for any specific movement. We're just trying to get it in its own growing space so that it doesn't interfere with this other branch growth. It's actually kind of an interesting branch. We still have the option of keeping this in the future. Even though it has this long inner node here, we could potentially fill this little bud out into a nice branch that comes over the top of that and create a few layers. So even when we're working with a apparently sacrificial branch, we do want to be super careful and, and not force ourselves into any premature decisions. And I'm not sure we're going to keep the entire length of the branch, but because it was one of the thicker branches on the tree, I didn't want to reduce it back too heavily and risk dieback. So I pruned it back fairly hard. We're going to see how this grows through the spring, and we can make some additional pruning decisions in midsummer. This is kind of a branch, kind of a sub-trunk. I made a really drastic cut here to remove some of that, and I didn't want to cut this back too hard. I'm most likely going to cut this all the way back here to this node, and then continue the movement. But for now, through the spring, I wanted to leave this extension so we don't risk any dieback. I'm also not really sure what I'm going to do with this branch here. It may go. But for now, I'm just going to leave it, allow this to heal through the spring, and see what we're left with. Still a very young tree. We've got time to make some of these large adjustments and set this tree on its correct path forward. All right, let's get in here and see what this root ball looks like. 
So this little Sagan was a great find. And this one here was about half the cost of the Candy Kitchen. This tree was around the three or $400 range with shipping. So if you're looking for something like this, make sure to find Ed on Facebook. It's been in here for a few weeks now. It's definitely ready to be potted up into a proper container. Now this tree is still in development, so we may go into some sort of a training pot for the next couple of years and see if we can continue building the size and the structure on this thing. Right, let's see if we can get it out of there without making too much of a mess. Yep, there we go. Okay, there's that board underneath. Let's get in there with our ice pick and start breaking into that root ball a little bit. All right, guys, I had to bail on you for a minute there. It is freaking cold out here. It's like 40 degrees and my fingers were turning pink and my toes were about to fall off. So I went inside and I was on my dining room floor chopping away. Uh, we're gonna get back at it. I think we got just a little bit more to go here on this root ball. Oh, that wind is coming. All right, guys, I'll see you on the other side. All right, folks, it was just way too freaking cold out there in the backyard. It was like killing me when that wind came up. I think we're basically there. So like this is all one solid root ball. If you look right here, you can see it's kind of like right here. And then there's this really big root coming across. And from this angle, there's a lot of crazy like crossing roots. And so it's like not ideal uh, but I think we're really going to have to, like, just work with what we got. I don't know if there's enough here that I can, like, dig down in here and create that normal triangular shape. Or if we really just have to, like, deal with this. You can kind of see if we make an angle, if we take the angle, like, right about here, it's actually not a bad looking trunk line. And then it would kind of have this extension over here. So we could still like get down in here and figure this out. So anyway, I'm gonna just keep digging at this for a little while and then try to figure out where this bottom's at. All right, folks, we're going to add some bonsai soil into a pot here. This is a mixture of perlite, expanded shale, vermiculite, a little bit of that safety zorb. Lastly, there's a little bit of organics. By the yard, I buy bulk mushroom compost, which is basically broken down woody material. It's a bulk compost. All right, we got our layer there. Let's get our board. Uh, just to even figure out our level. We do want that tree to be down in pretty good contact with the board, but more importantly, we want to have our angle set here. I think we're right about in there. Now this Nabari is not optimal. You can see we got a bunch of crossing roots through here, but this really is a pretty spectacular big root base. The important part is we got it really flattened out. So this thing is going to fit into its future bonsai pot. We're going to allow this thing to regrow a lot of these roots. And just fill up this entire pot. We'll probably let it grow in here for a year or two before we do any major repotting on it. Depending on how it grows, if it's really vigorous, we may lift the tree next spring, but I'm in no rush to get it out of this training pot. Remember, our goal here is to think about the long-term plan for this tree. Oh yeah, some of these are really problematic. That's okay, that's gonna be the rear of the tree and we don't want to cut too many after doing that major root reduction there we do need to leave some of these fine feeder roots to 
to make sure that this thing springs right back because spring is right on the horizon. We're gonna be exploding with growth sometime in the next couple of weeks. All right, yeah, it's looking a little bit better there. We're just gonna chop stick around here. Make sure the soil is packed in every nook and cranny under this tree. We don't want to leave any air gaps so that this entire root ball has an opportunity to grow. This tree has a lot of potential. I'm really excited for it. This little guy here is pretty long. It's probably going to grow right down into the pot. We'll see what happens. If I need to wire that branch out there, I will. We'll make sure we get it in a good position to grow out. We do need to do a little bit more refinement work. Like I said earlier, I got that comment about cleaning up these larger cuts. I did take off a couple of large roots around on this side of the tree. So I'm gonna come in here with a razor blade and clean those up and cut putty those to make sure they're sealed. But before I worry about that, let's get this tree watered in. All right, we're gonna come down in here with our razor blade and Try to get a nice clean cut so we can heal over this Nobari here. Oh yeah, that's perfect right there. Let's try to get this one here too. Oh, yeah, we left quite a bit on this one. There we go. delicate care we put in now is going to pay dividends on this future tree. I don't ever want to be in too much of a hurry. I've already noticed when I'm working with the camera, I do get a little bit nervous, get a little bit jumpy, and almost like I just don't have as much of my not as focused on the job when I've got the camera rolling, so please forgive me. I'm sure I'll get more comfortable as time goes by, so I appreciate y'all's patience, but I do want to make sure we take the best care possible of these little trees here. All right, let me do one more. nice and clean. I don't know if this cut putty will stick. You smash it down onto there, it'll stick into those grooves. Oh yeah, let's get that one on there too. All right. This thing really does have a pretty impressive base. This has got to be, well, if you count that root there, this is definitely four to five inches across. Not counting that root just here to the base. I mean, that's still like a three and a half, four inch root base there. So impressive, I'm really stoked. This is just gonna be an awesome tree. All right, folks, thanks for joining me. 